The oldest of the three joined the squabble. I get him because I'm the oldest. You two can have bad dog. The dog, hearing his name, lifted his head, decided nothing of importance was happening, and dropped it again. The younger girl, who was wearing her sister's outgrown shorts and blouse, objective. Just because you're oldest, you always think you have everything. Here's the picture. She's holding the cat behind her. I think that's socks that she's probably holding since she doesn't want him to leave. No fair, shouted the boy. Bad dog belongs to all of us. Debbie unhooked the kitten's claws from her t-shirt and tried to hide him behind her back. Socks struggled. Until this morning, Debbie always had been careful to support his feet when she held him, and she never had squeezed before. I want that one with white feet that the girl is hiding, said the older girl. Me too, me too. The boy jumped up and down and clutched his swimming trunks, which his mother had bought for him to grow into. I know. The younger sister had found a solution. Mommy can buy us each a kitten. That's what you think, said the weary mother. One is plenty. We'll take the one with white feet. Socks had almost wiggled free when a second pair of hands seized him. He felt himself being lifted. Metal creaked. The hands thrust him into darkness and he found himself falling. He landed on something smooth in a dark, siffling place. Above, he heard a creak and a clang. Outside, he heard shouting and the sound of Debbie's bursting into tears. The strangest thing had happened to Socks that morning. He mailed him, cried the small boy. That big boy mailed the kitten I wanted. The one I wanted, contradicted his big sister. Cut it out, kids, said the mother. The little sister shrieked, Mommy, he hit me. Now she had her brother in the wrong. Socks slipped and slid on the letters that crackled beneath his paws as he explored the dark mailbox. The place was sweltering, but it was free from other kittens. For the first time in seven weeks of life, Socks had found a place where no one could step on his face or bite his tail. He lay down on the letters to catch up on the rest he had missed that morning. Outside, the commotion continued. I'm fed up with you kids fighting all the time, said the mother. Just for that, we won't buy a kitten at all. All three children protested. No fair. You said you'd buy us a kitten. You promised. Please, Mommy, just one. We won't fight any more. Honest. Come along, said the mother, relieved to have an excuse for leaving the kittens behind. I'll buy you popsicles. I need a kitten like a hole in the head. This decision was followed by shouts of, I want lime. I want grape. I don't want a popsicle. I want a Slurpee. Socks was discovering that the heat inside the box made sleep impossible. The chute at the top opened. Socks, are you all right down there? Socks recognized the tearful voice as Debbie's, even though it sounded loud and hollow. Then she demanded for her brother. How are you going to get him out? He's roasting if we leave him in there. He'll starve. He'll die. She tried to cool the box by opening and closing the creaky chute. You didn't want a bunch of fighting kids to get him, did you? asked George. You want him to go to a good home, don't you? How can we sell him when he's in the mailbox? asked Debbie. Nobody can see him. Look, said George. It says on the box that the mail will be picked up at 11.23 a.m. The clock in the market says 11.15. All we have to do is wait for the mailman to unlock the box and we'll get socks back. There was a loud sniff outside the mailbox. Are you sure the mailman will give him back? Hope and respect for her brother had replaced fear and anger in Debbie's voice. Sure, I'm sure, said George. The post office doesn't want kittens any more than anyone else. I hope nobody wants to mail a package before 1123. It might hit socks. The tears were gone from Debbie's voice. Nice fresh kittens for sale, she called out as she tried to fan air into the mailbox. Sax stretched out, panting, puzzled by all that had happened. A letter falling from above was only another puzzlement, but the heat forced him to mew in distress. Hang on, Sax, Debbie's voice echoed down the chute. Help is coming. At precisely 11.23, he lay gasping on the letter. Sax was frightened by the sound of keys rattling against metal. Before he could move, 
the side of the box dropped down and he lay blinking in the glare of the sun before an audience of shoppers. Well, how about that, said the driver of the mail truck when he saw the kitten. Socks, cried Debbie, rescuing her kitten from the letters. Don't you know it's a federal offense to tamper with the United States mail, asked the driver as he scooped mail into his sack. Debbie looked so alarmed that he said, relax, I'm only joking. A kitten doesn't count as mail unless he stamps unless he has stamps stuck on him. And even then, I'm not sure. There's the mailman looking at the cat. The scene attracted more shoppers. A young couple pushed a cart of groceries towards the parking lot, paused to watch what was going on. Debbie trusted their appearance, held socks up, socks up for their inspection. This is socks, she said. We named him Socks because he looks like he's wearing white socks. He's the smartest kitten in the bunch, said George, his voice brimming with hope. If they sold one kitten, they could sell more, and he would be free to go to the library. Unaware that his future was about to be decided, Socks struggled and mewed to be put down. Debbie would not let him go. See, she said to the young couple, he likes you. Look at this little at his little paws and his tiny pointy tail, cried the young woman, whose name was Marilyn Bricker. And look at his beautiful markings, those black stripes on his back and the black rings around his tail, like the rings on a raccoon's tail, and those little white socks. Oh, Bill, we must take him. We need a cat to sleep in front of our fireplace this winter, now that we have a house. He's a very smart kitten, George pressed for a sale. He's housebroken, too. I always wanted a kitten when I was a kid, remarked Bill Bricker, but my mother didn't like cats. Then you should have a kitten now, said Debbie. Debbie and George exchanged a look that wiped away their disagreements of the morning. They were about to sell a kitten. Mr. Bricker reached into the pocket of his jeans for change. Fifty cents is the best offer I can make, he said with a smile. Oh, that's all right. Debbie was willing to be generous. Daddy said to give them away if we had to. Thank you, said George, as he accepted two 25-cent pieces. Debbie felt she should say something to make the transaction official. Satisfaction guaranteed or your money. She thought better of what she was about to say and instead handed the kitten to Mrs. Bricker. Bye, Socks, she said. Be a good kitten. Socks found himself cuddled, not squeezed, in the arms of the strange Mrs. Bricker while George said to his sister, Look, if you're ever going to learn to make change, you've got to learn that 50 cents is a lot more than 20 cents. Socks, did you hear that? The girl said. Mrs. Bricker stroked the tabby markings on the tiny head. She said, satisfaction guaranteed. Socks' eyes were closing. He was worn out by all that had happened that morning. To us or to the kitten, asked Mrs. Bricker as he lifted the bags of groceries over the tailgate of an old station wagon. To the kitten, of course, Marilyn Bricker laughed affectionately. I know you and your heart of jello. All right, that's the first chapter. So wait till tomorrow and you'll be able to find out what happens to Socks as he goes to his new home.